Which you guys, today we're taking a look at five common ways of getting a computer virus. The first way is probably the most lucrative for cyber criminals, and that is getting people to click on links in emails. This is probably still one of the most effective ways of getting malware onto the system. Emails are made to look like from someone like your bank or from, say, for instance, your ISP or TV licenses or other particular types of scams. They will look like this. This is supposed to be from a, you know, ISP company telling you that, you know, you've got a last reminder a subscription will be ended, i.e. you will lose your internet. What they want you to do is click on this link right here. You can see when you click on this, it will redirect you to another page. This could be to download a piece of malware and inject it onto your system, or it could be a, a scamming page to get you to log in and put in your details to basically stop this from happening. Some of these pages are active, i.e. when you right click on them or even when you left click on them. You have to be super careful when you're hovering over these pages because they can literally just automatically just change when you click on them with the left click or the right click. You should not be touching any of this stuff. You should just basically delete the email altogether. These can be from parcel delivery companies. The list is endless. These are the most lucrative way for scammers or cyber criminals to get you to click on stuff some of them are even malicious where it will drop a file onto the computer and it will maybe a pdf file as an attachment and it's not an actual pdf it's an actual executable file when you click on it it will inject ransomware onto the system and encrypt all your data there's some malicious people out there and they will do this so they can hold your data to ransom for an extortionate amount of money so be careful what you click on here. This one is telling me that we've got a potentially dangerous virus detected on our system. The name says, dear user, it doesn't know who I am. Uh, sometimes you get poor spelling and poor grammar on the email itself because these are generated from a foreign country and their native language is not English. And you can see they want you to click on this activate protection now. And these all lead to a either a malicious file or they lead you to another site. And this is where you've got to be careful. You should never, ever put in any personal information into any of these sites that they redirect to because this is how they get your information. These are what we sometimes call phishing emails. And you can see right here, this says, Dear user, it's not addressed to me personally. And even the actual uh, link to these will be a malicious site. This one is supposed to be from a ISP called Virgin Media. And you can see it's pretty poor English and it's dear Brian.w. And then you've got due to multiple reports concerning your email account, this notice is essential to prevent any potential suspicion. To maintain uninterrupted access, please act promptly. And it will say review and update your security settings. Strengthen your password and scan your device for threats. Swift action is will secure your account and ensure the continued access. And they want you to click on that particular red button right there. But if you click on any part of this, it will literally take you to another site where they want you to put in your personal details. And you can see the redirect link down on the bottom left. It is redirecting to a completely different site. The actual email address says Virgin UK, but if you look at the email address, it's not an actual Virgin uh, Media account that it's coming from. And it says two, and there's a number at AOL.com, and there's another one, copy to Brian.w at NTOL.com. There's a bunch of other ways that they would do this as well. So they can try to mask that uh, information there to make it look like it's from Virgin Media or from a bank or from other sources. So be very careful here it says renew your subscription. Never click on this stuff. This is what they want you to do. They want you to click on this and it will redirect you and they would ask you for your personal stuff, like your personal information. It will look something like this and it will look legit and you'll go and give your information and it will then ask for banking details or even, you know, passwords and things like that. And this is what they will need to gain access to your account. The next one is downloading from untrustworthy sites or downloading software that is paid software 
that they're offering for free by downloading it from their site. You'll see when you click on these links, they start redirecting constantly. And this is because these are ads that they are running and they get a lot of revenue from these really aggressive ads. And this is what's happening here. Also, you may get forced downloads just like this one when you're getting redirects. And these are from untrustworthy sites. People click on these thinking it's the actual download that they're getting and it ends up infecting their browser and then it downloads more malware onto their computer. This sort of stuff is very, very common and people still do it today, whether it be for games or programs, people still download pirated software or crack software from the internet, which is illegal and you shouldn't be doing it and you're going to end up getting infected. So whether you're downloading from untrustworthy sites like this one, where they're offering all the latest software, all paid software uh, for free, this is obviously illegal and it is also piracy and a lot of this stuff will get your system infected. There's an array of software here that people download on a regular basis. They'll either download it from websites like these or they will download it from torrents or other sources. So be very, very careful if you are doing this. Now, I've blurred a lot of this stuff out because it's redirecting to stuff that I don't want people to see. But as you can see here, it's pretty nasty stuff. There's ads all over the pages here. And this is where people get confused. This is another one that causes problems is uh, online ads. There's tons of them. They are blanketed with online ads where people click on them and it will then download files onto their computer. People then click on these files and then, of course, it will then infect their browser. They can end up with redirects or nasty stuff that you can see here. So be very, very careful. You can see another download has just come down right there. So be very, very careful when you're going to sites like these. Now, I've blurred a lot of this stuff out because I don't want to promote any of this stuff on my channel. And I certainly don't want people going to this place and end up getting infected. And this is what will happen. You will end up getting your PC infected by downloading from these sites. Another really telltale sign of dodgy uh, stuff that people download is when they password actual files. You can see here they're requesting you to put a password in to open the file up. This generally means there is something inside that is malicious and they don't want it being detected by your antivirus program. So they will put a password on it, which means your antivirus program can't scan inside of that file. And this is another common trick that these types of people will do. They will password a lot of these malicious files and you will then download it. It doesn't detect automatically on your antivirus program because it's passworded. They will then tell you in a little readme to disable your antivirus program to be able to install this because it's safer to do that. It's not safe and they want you to do that so they can get the file injected onto the computer. When you upload these to sites like Virus Total, they will be listed for many different things like hack tool, uh, you know, downloaders, Trojan downloaders, or they could be backdoors, they could be botnets, they could be, you know, key loggers. There's all sorts of stuff that could be embedded in these cracked files. So be careful if they're telling you to turn off your antivirus like this to be able to install this onto your computer, then that's a real big telltale sign that something dodgy is going to happen. Now, there normally is a readme or how to install this particular software on your PC. And the first thing they'll tell you to do is turn off your antivirus program and then you can unzip it. Now, if you don't turn off your antivirus, it will detect it and delete it straight away as a virus. And that's exactly what it is. It's a malware that wants to get onto your system. And this is why they want to turn off your uh, antivirus program. Now, you're going to get people telling you that this is a false positive, And this is why you need to turn off your antivirus, because it detects uh, this malicious file. But let me tell you, once these get onto your system, this could be really nasty. You wouldn't even know it's sitting there in the background, logging your keystrokes or it could inject itself straight away as ransomware onto the system and encrypt all of your data and they can hold you to ransom. Or it could be something more malicious, like hiding itself in your browser, you know, waiting for you to log on to a bank or something like that. And they would then be able to get your information. Be very, very careful when downloading any particular types of malicious stuff like this, because you will 
end up paying for it one day and it's just simply not worth it. And this is why these people do this on a daily basis. They will upload malware to the internet and they will use other sites, social media sites that get a lot of traffic to upload their nasty stuff up there in the hope that someone is searching for a particular type of software to download. And of course, there will be their file for you to download and you'll think that you're going to get this for free. And what will happen is you'll end up getting infected in the process. They use powerful sites that get a lot of traffic like this one. As you can see, this was uploaded 12 hours ago. And you can see there is already a download link right here. It takes you to this place here. Nasty adverts on here as well that will redirect you to uh, certain uh, sites. And you can see here already there's all of the normal programs that people will search for. And they will have a, a dummy site like this. They will buy a domain name and they will blanket it with loads of malicious files on there for search terms that people are searching for. And they will use powerful sites like you see to gain traffic to this site. Now, another thing that I wanted to point out is using old software. Using old software, if you're using an old operating system and you're using old software on it, this software has not been patched and it's outdated. And I can understand that you might want to use XP or Windows 7, but if you're using old software, it's going to make your system vulnerable. As you can see here, it's already telling me that this software is uh, out of date and it's not viable to run this on Windows 11. But people are still running this on old end-of-life operating systems, and this makes you very vulnerable if you are using software that is completely outdated and not patched, especially browsers. They are generally uh, end-of-life, and they will stop uh, producing uh, browsers for that particular operating system. And same thing for antivirus software and things like that. Be very, very careful. If there's a particular piece of software that you need to use, then make sure you're running this offline and you're not online uh, and then you can still use this particular software. Maybe it's a case you want to put this into a virtual machine on an old uh, operating system. That's completely fine as long as you uh, disconnect it from the internet and you can then use the software that way. Or if you have an old computer, make sure it's disconnected from the internet and you would then be able to use this software still if you need to use this software uh, today in 2024. Now, I know I've covered more than five common ways of getting your computer infected. I just wanted to cover as much as I can. But these sites, what you'll see here, oldversion.com, they are perfectly fine to use. This is where you get old software from. And if you're using an old operating system, maybe the old software is the only software that will run on that particular uh, operating system. But just remember, guys, if you are using old operating systems, there's nothing wrong with using Windows XP or Windows 7, even though it's end of life, as long as you're running it offline and you're not constantly connected to the outside world, there is no way that that operating system will be safe in 2024, even though people tell you it is, it's because it's not being patched. If you look at the amount of security updates you're getting for Windows 11 or Windows 10 today, every single month, you'll realize how outdated that operating system is and how many security patches are not being given to that particular operating system anymore because it doesn't receive them. Now I know Windows 11 has all of its problems with privacy concerns and things like that like Recall and Copilot Plus and all that sort of stuff but it is a really secure operating system way more secure than what Windows XP, Windows 7, Windows Vista was and it will protect you a lot more than what those older operating systems used to do because they used to be so easy to infect it was laughable but this one is a lot more secure anyway but that said i think that's going to be about it my name has been brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk just want to say a quick shout out to my youtube members who join my youtube members group whether you're tier one tier two or tier three i really do appreciate the support i shall catch you in the next video or i'll catch you on the discord server for a chat have a lovely weekend and i'll catch you in the next one bye for now